Welcome everyone. Buenas tardes. Thank you for joining us. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. It's such a privilege to see you, to have you here with us. It was wonderful to connect with some of you at the table earlier before the show. Thank you for your patience. Um, it means so much to have you here with us today. For us, comunidad is the ultimate expression of what it means to be Latino in America. Leading familias and fellow Latinos to a better future, yo creo en esta visión de nuestro país. Breaking down barriers, opening doors, and clearing a path, Hispanic access establishes access as its top priority from connecting communities with issue experts and decision makers to providing firsthand experiences and tools and resources and even job opportunities, Hispanic Access helps improve people's lives, communities, and the nation as a whole. In January, I had the opportunity to travel to the heart of Latino Chicago, where the Pilsen and Little Village neighborhoods are located on the southwest side of downtown Chicago. There I gathered with partners and network members in a warehouse. And I had the opportunity to shoot this brand film that I'm about to share with you. A brand film tells this, our story to the world. It's deeply personal, not only for me, but for all of us because the story of Hispanic access is a shared story. It also demonstrates why our work is an important part of a broader ecosystem of people and organizations that are working to create equity in our society. Y ahora les presento, to, and now I'm so proud to, to introduce you to Hispanic Access's Mejores Juntos film. Gracias. like single threads woven into the same fabric. An interconnected tapestry of colors, textures, and strengths. We come from different places with stories as diverse as our individual lives, but together we form something better. Latinos have contributed to the flourishing of our nation in ways big and small. And still, we are often marginalized, misunderstood, and minimized within the American experience. Latinos aren't afforded the same educational opportunities as non-Hispanic whites, and the number of those living in poverty is nearly double that of non-Hispanic whites. I know firsthand the setbacks that these inequities can cause for Latinos. My family immigrated to the U.S. from Mexico when I was very young. They were able to become U.S. citizens, hold good jobs, improve our lives, and also give back to their community. I celebrate all that they accomplished, but I imagine how much more they could have achieved had they had access to trusted information and resources to guide them. Now, as founder of Hispanic Access Foundation, I draw from these experiences and countless others who dream of a bright future. My team and I work tirelessly to provide tools and resources so that Latinos can thrive in all areas of life. At Hispanic Access, we live out our mission and vision in four key ways. We build bridges of access to and from Latino communities. We develop Latino leaders so that we can move from the sidelines to the front lines to ensure that we have a central place in the American story. We cultivate trust-based relationships to inspire future generations of Latinos to reach for a brighter future. We elevate Latino voices to ensure equity and representation. By using our collective voices, we build a better America for all. There are countless stories, like Frank Ruiz, a program director for Audubon, California. With Hispanic access, Frank advocated for three national monuments that have protected over 1.8 million acres of public lands for future generations. 
Josue Rubio is a graduate of our Hispanic Leadership Network. He was inspired to start his own nonprofit, Vida Foundation, which meets the food and security needs of local youth and helps inspire and train young leaders in the community. Yvette Lopez discovered a passion for connecting urban communities with nature and the outdoors during her internship with our Mono Project. Today, Yvette works as a park ranger for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, mentoring incoming interns, inspiring the next generation of conservation leaders. Linda Sosa was a graduate from our first Hispanic Leadership Network. She initiated a COVID vaccination program that's led to more than 34,000 Latinos getting vaccinated. Comunidad, it's the ultimate expression of what it means to be Latino in America, putting others before self so that all can thrive. Latinos are more than invisible threads in our society. We are an essential element in the fabric of American life. We are woven together stronger together. We are better together. Somos mejores juntos. Buenas tardes. My name is Luke Miguel Arglaben, the Director of Development at Hispanic Access. It is my pleasure to introduce Pastor Moses Borjas. Pastor Moses has served in ministry for over 22 years. His leadership has touched many in Juarez, Mexico, New Mexico, and in Texas where he lives. Pastor Moses is also a leader in his denomination and he trains other faith leaders to better serve their congregations in the U.S. and in Mexico. Pastor Moses was part of our first Hispanic Leadership Network cohort back in 2018. This program is a comprehensive program that builds capacity, confidence, and provides a peer network for leaders across the country. Since he has joined Por la Creación Faith-Based Alliance for the Environment. He first started working with us in an ongoing effort uh, that he had been making to get protections for Casner Range uh, in his local area. His effort led to the securing of resources to get the range safely cleaned. And this year, through his ongoing efforts to protect Casner Range and designate it as a national monument, this park that is so near and dear to him and his community, they have made new progress. His leadership has led to an opportunity for him to speak with Congresswoman Veronica es Escobar, as well as being interviewed by media outlets. This has brought renewed attention and support to the designation of the range. And so now it is my honor to introduce to you, Pastor, Moses Borjas. Thank you so much, Luke. Muchas gracias a todos. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to speak here. And thank you, Dr. Maite Arce, for this great opportunity and all the Hispanic Access team that works so hard uh, to make this happen. Thank you so much. Um, you know, one of the one of the blessings I have is to be able to uh, understand uh, familia through, uh, not only through myself, but through different generations. I'm a fourth generation pastor through my mom's side and a second generation pastor, local leader through my father's side. And one of the things that they instilled in my heart was first and foremost, faith. One of the things is to believe, to think outside my, my own life and think that Faith is not only to want things for myself, but also to believe in things that can make our lives and the people around us better. I, I take one little word today and I leave it here as I speak in these minutes. And the word is legacy. Uh, legacy is a very important word that as, as leaders we have to follow. 
one of the things that reminds me, and many of you might probably uh, uh, remember the story of a story of a prodigal son. Prodigal son was given an opportunity, but he decided to make changes in his life and he wanted his inheritance. Fortunately, maybe his immaturity took him to make very wrong decisions and took a wrong route and misusing that inheritance, you know, and one of the things I've learned is that we can have great opportunities, but we got to think through legacy and legacy is to be reminded of what we're going to do, with what we have today, not only to get it and run with it, but how are we going to leave it in a way that we're going to be able to impact the next generations to come. I believe as a pastor that we are bearers of God's image and all people have the responsibility and privilege of caring for God's creation. And in the last months, I've had the privilege of working very closely here in El Paso to um, work for a dream to come about. And that is to make uh, Castner Range uh, one of our um, hills here in uh, the montañas, the beautiful montañas de El Paso, Texas, uh, to make it a national monument. And we are so excited because every time we feel that we're coming closer and closer to see this happen. Of course, it doesn't happen just because it's one person. It happens because there's a community right now, as you were hearing this message, hay una comunidad trabajando juntos. There's a community that is working together. You know, one thing that makes community is not because we all think the same, but because we have the same purpose. And that's what makes community. And I always say, you know, as Christians, we should be motivated because scripture really tells us a lot about um, what God gave us to be able to do. We ought to love and care and uh, for this earth, uh, you know, and for, and for all that is in it. And one thing for sure is that we live in this this earth and we live in this planet and it's our duty and it's our job to take care of it. And one of the scriptures that was always given by my father to me, uh, my father came from Zacatecas, Mexico, and my mother is from Juarez, Mexico. And I was born and raised here in El Paso. But one of the things that my dad instilled in my life was a verse found in Mark chapter 12, verse 29. And it starts saying, the importance of this scripture is that you are to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, to love your comunidad, to love what you want to see around you. You know, uh, one of the things that, if you want something to happen, new something to happen. If you want something that has never happened before, you have to do something that you've never done before. This really takes risks and really takes, um, I'm going to say this, riesgos. It takes a bold heart. It takes coraje. It takes courage to really uh, see things happen. And today I sit here because one of the things that we're working here in El Paso is not only to see Casner Range become a national monument, but also to be heard. And we have the privilege that next month we will be in the White House, not, I mean, in Washington, sorry. We're going to be in Washington, D.C., and we're going to speak to uh, governmental leaders, and we're going to speak with uh, key leaders, and we want to keep pushing and moving this forward. I am so blessed that I uh, have the opportunity of having uh, Dr. Amaite Arasa being part of that endeavor. Thank you so much. But we also need not only to see one perspective, but we need to see through the needs of others. And as I, I, want, to, I want to share this, and as I close, one of the things is that in life, that is the most important thing that I think we need to follow, the needs that we see around. ¿Qué son las necesidades que vemos alrededor? What are the needs that we see around us? And one of the things is that we have a lot of needs around us all the time. So our love for God must be reflected in fulfilling the role that he gave to, com the, to humanity. And, and, and he appointed us to be bearers of his image. And he entrusted this world to our care. 
So caring for God's creation is seeing the needs and being able to help in those needs. A lot of you today are here and you have so many talents and abilities where you're at. You can be able to fulfill this need. And so in closing today, I want to encourage everyone not only, not only to say, I want to do something, but as you are doing something to say, this is legacy. It's not going to stop with me. It's not going to end with me. It's going to keep going many generations to come. Entonces, hoy de todo corazón, from today with all my heart, I send blessings to you. Thank you, Doctora Maite. Un saludo desde El Paso. And we're saying, um, cast the range, protect, and cast the range forever. Muchas gracias. Dios les bendiga. Muchas gracias, Pastor Moses. Thank you so much. I I like, I'm so um, grateful to you for sharing your story and your wisdom with us all the way from El Paso. I like to say you are a constant leader in your community and for your community. A long time ago, uh, someone said to me, leadership is not in a name or in a title, but it, instead it's primarily uh, demonstrated through action. And you are a wonderful example of that. And I'm very grateful for your life, uh, your wife, Lily, and that of your supportive familia. Everyone, thank you so much for your um, wonderful hearts and, and cheers and, and comments. Um, I'd like to share a few things about um, some of the recent work that we have had underway that are incredible team of uh, leaders who work for Hispanic Access, um, in addition to our community partners, and of course, those working in community have been a part of. Um, many people can say Hispanic Access's work is complex, and it's not because we do too much, um, but it's because of the depth and the alignment of the work within communities as well as nationally. For example, in the past 12 months, 44,000 COVID-19 vaccinations have been provided in nine U.S. cities in neighborhood clinics that offer Spanish language education and services in a trusted environment. This means Latinos who have been without access or concerned about trusting the process or have other hesitancies took action to protect themselves and their familias. This is our Somos Unidos program. 1,800 community events have been held in local collaboration with 2,700 leaders, nonprofits, partners working together, such as our wonderful friends at Latino Outdoors, to impact families through authentic and culturally rich recreation, education, stewardship, and advocacy. Through Latino Conservation Week, we are not only telling our stories, but we're celebrating in unique ways, juntos en comunidad, the importance we place on ensuring a healthy natural environment for future generations. 600 exciting paid federal natural resource internships in our national parks and wildlife refuges and other public lands and waterways have been providing young leaders with exposure to valuable career opportunities that for many has led to permanent jobs that they love. Through the MONO project, hundreds of young leaders now have new capacities, new friends, peer support, as well as a professional network and jobs. They are boldly charging forward to seize these opportunities with strength and creating a path for others. 97 faith leaders all the way from Anchorage, Alaska to Ponce, Puerto Rico have completed the Hispanic Leadership Network Fellowship, building their capacity, 
peer support networks and taken, taking vacation together, many for the first time, to enjoy friendships, rest, restoration, and the beautiful national parks that our nation offers. Those leaders are now authors, they're pursuing graduate education, they're starting nonprofits, they're getting promoted in their jobs, and they're experiencing bold leadership growth. We care deeply about this because every day they're guiding and leading hundreds of thousands of immigrant community members who look to them for spiritual guidance and community navigation. Hispanic Access is well on its way to growing our network of an interconnected leadership of leaders to be 10,000 strong by 2030. These leaders are many of you and are key to the systemic change that needs to happen in this nation that will ensure justice and a healthy, thriving society for all. And I wonder, I ask myself, did you know a third of our financial resources goes directly to individuals, grassroots community leaders, network members, program collaborators, and these resources have not only strengthened their leadership capacity, but they've made, um, they've helped make the work of Hispanic access possible. Never has this been more important than in the time that COVID-19 began and continues, when so many people from our community lost income, lost jobs, lost their health, lost family, and yet continued to find ways to serve community and help others. Over the first two years of COVID alone, more than 2.4 million in financial resources through Hispanic Access impacted individuals grassroots leaders, young people in communities, dreamers, and others across the nation. That is leadership in action. Nonprofit leadership is not easy, and I will fill your ear anytime you give me an opportunity to share all about it. But our team, our board of directors, our partners, and our networks, all of my favorite people in the world who are on this journey with us are um, the reason that we are so motivated and uh, full of energy to move this forward. I'm so very thankful to all of you. I'm thankful to our uh, supporters and our funding partners who, um, who we could not do this without. You are so important to us and we are so grateful to you. And now I'd like to introduce you to someone who's very special, Yvette Lopez, an incredible leader that gives me so much hope for our future. Yvette? Hello, everyone. Apologize, turning on my camera. Um, thank you all for being here. Gracias, Maite, for the kind words. Uh, my name is Yvette Lopez, and I am currently a park ranger with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, stationed out of the Sacramento Regional Office in California. As you can see behind me, I am here on a 30-day detail temporary assignment at the John Hines National Wildlife Refuge at Tinicum. Um, we're getting ready to celebrate our 50th anniversary um, 50 years of conservation and lots of great work being done. But I'm here to share a little bit about my story and about what the Mano Project means to me, and more importantly, why it's so important to partner with organizations like Hispanic Access. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm originally from San Jose, California, um, born and raised in East San Jose, a lot of cultural history there. And um, a lot of that I brought with me as um, as I kind of continued my career. So growing up, I had no idea, you know, a park ranger or even working for the government was something that was possible. Um, with that being said, continued um, some of my education and actually ended up in the Northeast for school. Um, with that, I actually found the Mono internship right after I graduated. Um, I had connected with someone before and they had mentioned there was this new opportunity with the US Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, who I hadn't heard of before, but they said it was like park service. So I was like, I'm for it. You know, it's working with kids, which some of them, you might hear them right now. They just finished up summer camp. Um, and so with that being said, we started off, I think, as a cohort of five. So I think one of the most tremendous things that I've seen over the last few years is that the program has gone exponentially. 
Um, it has just multiplied into different areas. We work now with BLM. We work now with the Forest Service. But I have to say, you know, some of the most memorable times as an intern was really that familia feeling that I had from HAF. I mean, from day one, they were very supportive. We had amazing conferences. We got to meet leadership from the Hispanic Access Foundation. We also got to meet um, leadership from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And so I think that really formed um, my internship um, to the point where I really wanted to be extended and continue the work that I did. Um, so thanks to Hispanic Access, I really found my passion in working with communities and most importantly, um, inspiring that next generation. Um, and so now in my current role, I actually help mentor the next cohort of interns. So I was really excited to bring the program to our region in California, Nevada, and Oregon, um, where we started with our first intern, Armando Porras, um, who is from Castroville, California. And what's really exciting is that about a month ago, um, so he's been an intern with us for two years now, but about a month ago, he actually accepted a permanent job with the Bureau of Land Management as an engineer. So with that being said, um, that is just one of the first of many examples that we will have a success in our region. But again, it would not be possible um, without uh, partners like the Hispanic Access Foundation. Um, it's been great being able to just work with them through different capacities. And whenever I have a question, whenever I need help, they are there. Um, and I think very similar to my story, Armando's story, you know, he continues to say, I didn't know you could work for the government. I didn't know you could combine engineering with um, natural sciences. So again, it's words like that and, and people like that to continue to motivate me um, to do what I do. Um, and it's just very important, I think, I want to say, to work with organizations like Hispanic Access because they allow us to really engage diverse communities, um, their expertise in reaching out to these communities, making sure we're recruiting locally. Um, and most importantly, that training. I think one of the most important things is the mentorship that I received. Um, I felt that not only did I have a financially stable internship, which is very important for some of our communities who can't afford to take a free internship, but I also had someone, whenever I had a question as an intern or even now, someone to just lean on. Um, and so with that being said, um, thank you, Maite, and the team. It is a tremendous team, you know, doing all this work. I want to congratulate all of you, you know, for continuing to grow this program um, over the last few years, you know, small team, but mighty. Um, and just for being so open, you know, to, to being willing to take on new ideas. I think, you know, I've had a lot of new ideas for the program in my region and the flexibility has been amazing. Um, so it's been a really rewarding experience um, to give back to my community and see other gr others grow in their careers. Um, I look forward to promoting Latino Conservation Week um, as we come into July, which is in a few weeks. So we'll be doing some of that in my region as well as here in Region 5. Um, so thank you all for taking some time to listen to me and I hope to see you after this talk. I hope you have enjoyed our program thus far. Um, again, my name is Luke, and I am the Director of Development here at Hispanic Access. It is my pleasure now to invite you to a new club, a club everyone can be a part of, Elevacion. Elevacion is a giving group, but it's much more than that. It is a dedicated community of our most valued partners who are committed to elevating Latino voices and leadership to ensure a brighter future for all. Listen now as we hear from a monthly donor who explains why giving back is important to her. Hi, my name is Crystal Diaz de Viegas, and I am from Miami, Florida, and that's where I'm currently living. And I am involved with the Hispanic Access Foundation as a board member. I choose to give to Hispanic Access Foundation because the organization just truly cares about people. 
Um, they're dedicated to improving the lives of individuals and their work ends up uplifting entire communities. So work around you know, providing Latino communities with access to jobs and green spaces and healthcare. Um, it's all so important in terms of changing their lives make and bringing Latino voices into really important spaces. So I give because I believe in their work and I trust the organization to use my donation to make a meaningful impact. Like Crystal, Elevacion members will make an automatic donation every month. A $22 donation can pay for a leader to attend a training. A $47 donation can get one person vaccinated. A $208 donation can take a kid whale watching. A life-changing experience that stewards the next generation of environment, environmental stewards. Monthly donations allow us to plan long-term for the future, budget more efficiently, and create more life-changing outcomes for Latinos and other people of color across the country. Please consider joining Elevacion today. Become a like-hearted investor who uses their influence and resources to uplift and impact the Latino community. You choose how much to give and for how long. And you can change your amount, pause, or cancel at any time. Members at all levels will receive exclusive updates sent only to the Elevacion community. We, Hispanic Access, by strategically stewarding the resources that you entrust to us, our initiatives, programs, our grassroots outreach efforts empower and inspire individuals to reach for a brighter future for themselves, their families, and for their communities. Together, we can help transform Latino lives. Now I'd like to hand it back to Maite for closing remarks. Muchas gracias, Luke. Thank you, everyone, so much for um, hearing, um, watching our brand video and, and just connecting today with us. It means so much to us. Um, in terms of um, seeing Crystal Diaz de Villegas, our board member, um, you know, for, for you, Crystal, on behalf of the Hispanic Access team, I can say we're so grateful for you and your commitment of time and expertise and for your monthly donation that serves as a constant encouragement to us, validation of our work, and of course, as resources for communities. We're very thankful for all of you who believe in us uh, because we are together bridge builders. We're path makers. We pave the way for Latinos to gain access to opportunities and resources that brings fullness of life in education, employment, healthy environment, and more. And as Luke said, we partner with like-hearted investors like you who use your influence and impact to uplift Latino communities. By strategically stewarding the resources entrusted to us, our initiatives, programs, grassroots outreach efforts, empower and inspire individuals to reach for a brighter future for themselves, their families, and their communities. Together, we can help transform people's lives. Thank you again for joining us today and we will now move to the fun part of networking at tables again to, together and connecting personally. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for joining us today.